Hello, saints. Grace, love, and peace of Christ Jesus be with all of you. 2 Timothy 2.15 in the King James Bible. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, a couple things I'd like to address before we begin our study today. First, for those saints out there who've recently been blessed by our Lord Jesus with eyes to see and ears to hear right division, it's like suddenly your understanding has come to a clarity of God's word that you've never experienced before. And it's as if, it's as if you finally have a glimpse of what the big picture looks like. It's like a puzzle that's almost finished and you're beginning to see what the puzzle is. I know your excitement. I remember the day when our Lord Jesus opened my eyes and gave me the gift of discernment through right division. Suddenly everything made sense. It's a feeling like you just can't get enough. You start to crave understanding. You begin to devour the King James Version Bible like never before. You just want more and more because now it's finally all making sense. However, let me warn you. From my own experience, through trial and error, I'm trying to help you because I learned from my own mistakes and frustration. If you're new to right division, you must begin with the book of Acts. Don't go all happy and jump into the topical studies on my channel before you have a firm foundation on what right division is all about. You must, you must understand who we are in Christ, what we are in Christ, why we are who we are in Christ, and how we became the body of Christ, and so on. And the book of Acts answers all of those questions for us. You see, the book of Acts is a transitional book. It explains the transition from Peter to Paul, from kingdom gospel to grace gospel, the prophetic program for Israel to the mystery program for us, the body of Christ. You have to understand all of that before jumping into more complicated studies. There's milk of the word and there's meat of the word. And you need to start from the beginning in order to appreciate the more specific topics found in Paul's 13 books, Romans through Philemon. Okay? So please take my advice. Someone who's been there and done that, learn the hard way. You know, I wish somebody would have told me to start with the book of Acts before trying to understand who and what we are throughout Paul's writings. It would have helped me tremendously to know what I later found out by studying the book of Acts. So with that, you can find my study on the book of Acts starting with Acts chapter 1 all the way through Acts chapter 28 starting at this link on the screen that's where you really need to begin your journey with right division and dispensational understanding okay now second we all got to see the amazing September 23rd excitement come and go and like I said in my videos concerning this sign on 23 September there wouldn't be anything huge happening on that day no rapture, no comets, no asteroids, no splitting of the earth in half, no end of life as we know it, and so on. As expected, and according to God's word, this sign was just that. It was a sign for something that is coming down the road. It's future tense. The sign, Revelation 12, is not for the body of Christ, but is for the nation of Israel. Now many of you probably fell for the famous teachers or teachers lies and confusion on YouTube that the rapture would happen. However, my students, my precious brothers and sisters in Christ who rightly divide and use the King James Version Bible all saw through those lies being fed to the masses on YouTube and in front of convention centers and on radio interviews and so on and so on making tens of thousands of dollars and laughing all the way to the bank my brothers and sisters on this channel who rightly divide could see all of those things that were wrong with that the whole false 
teaching and everything surrounding this false excitement concerning this day of 23rd September and you could see there was a couple things wrong with this particular person that was pushing this agenda first he or she didn't use the King James Version Bible if, if you noticed that's a big mistake that's a huge red, red flag second they don't understand the basics of God's Word yet they claim to understand right division they don't even understand the difference between the day of the Lord and the day of the Lord come. Two different events for two distinct times and so on. Third, they don't understand who we are because they think we are found in the book of Revelation. And even in other books written to and about the nation of Israel. They don't understand the difference because they don't rightly divide they don't even know what right division is they claim to know right division they use the phrase right division rightly dividing just to get credibility from a larger audience but they don't actually understand what right division is that's obvious anyhow this study will not be about this particular person so to end that topic some of you may have been deeply hurt by believing these lies even to the point of disappointment even depression even suicidal thoughts and even doubting god's word i want you to understand one thing that's exactly what the enemy's goal was to separate you from god's truth and from his comfort those things that come from understanding his word now one good thing that did come from all of this is now we know who the false teachers are and if you're wise you'll do exactly what Paul tells Timothy to do I'm sorry not Timothy Paul tells us what to do in the book of Romans Romans 16 verse 17 now I beseech you brethren Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. Mark them and avoid them. In today's lingo, unsubscribe and forget their names. Move forward and don't look back getting involved with these false teachers and getting all confused leads to one various conclusion the forfeiture of what you see now on the screen and that's what we're going to be discussing throughout this study how to build precious stones while you still have time and how not to build false stones ending up in heaven and the judgment seat of Christ with nothing but wood, hay, stubble, things that really you won't be too happy about. So chalk it up as a lesson learned. We all learned a big lesson from this and use this lesson to give us spiritual growth. It's time to move forward, all right? Amen. Now, as we wait patiently upon our Lord Jesus, we continue to occupy, we continue to plant seeds, and we continue to grow spiritually in knowledge, in faith, and trust, which, by the way, are given to each of us by measure. Now, if you recall in our last study on 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, I got a, a lot of really great feedback from that study. We discussed three different events for different groups of people. The day of Christ, the day of our Lord come, and the day of the Lord. The day of Christ is for the body of Christ. This day will be when we're caught up and brought before the judgment seat of Christ. The day of the Lord come is the event surrounding the second coming of our Lord Jesus when he comes with his army in wrath and anger at the end of Daniel's 70th week. The day of the Lord is a 1,000 year period beginning with Daniel's 70th week 
and ending 993 years later with the great white throne judgment and the creation of a new earth and a new heaven and so on. Now in understanding these different events, we also see that there are different judgments as well. We just briefly discussed two of them, the judgment seat of Christ and the great white throne judgment. Also in the book of Matthew, you'll, see, you'll notice in chapter 6, 10, 11, and 12, you'll see another judgment called the day of judgment. For example, in Matthew eleven twenty four, but I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. So we see the day of Christ having judgment associated with it, the day of the Lord come having judgment, and also judgment is associated with the day of the Lord as well. The results of the judgment seat of Christ will determine what you are and who you are in Christ Jesus for eternity, yes. Paul warns us about this. Either you build precious stones or you build wood, hay, and stubble. The problem is, there's a famine in the land. There are very few members in the body of Christ that know how to build precious stones. They've never been taught. Because the judgment seat of Christ is a subject that has been overlooked by so many teachers. So we'll be looking at some of the particulars involved in the judgment seat of Christ, specifically our inheritance and our rewards of the inheritance. Two different subjects that the body of Christ is going to be taking part in. Just like there's a difference between the day of Christ, the day of the Lord come, and the day of the Lord, there's also a difference between the inheritance and the reward of the inheritance. Two different things entirely. Now have you noticed how hard the enemy has tried to hide the events surrounding the judgment seat of Christ? He's doing that for a reason. Remember in our last study, I said, whenever you see something changed in God's word, added, removed, or a seeming contradiction in his word, that those indicators are red flags that, you, you, you know, it's an indicator that you really need to pay special attention whenever you see those things because something very important is being obstructed from your understanding. And if it's that important that the enemy tries to hide it, then it must be something very important. Notice how the new versions change the phrase judgment seat of Christ back to the Greek word bima seat. Now think about that for a second. Does it make any sense to take a phrase that is perfect just the way it is in English and change it back to the original language hiding its meaning? Well, that's exactly what the new versions do. And it's exactly what preachers and teachers and pastors are doing as well when they use new corrupted counterfeit versions of God's word. Like I said earlier, if you're listening to a person that is not using the King James Version Bible, you're wasting your time. Instead of using the phrase judgment seat of Christ, they all use the Bema seat and then tell you not to worry about it. Because the Bema Seed is all about receiving rewards and it's a big old party in the sky, right? I'll tell you right now, if your preacher or teacher or whoever is saying these things, you need to start asking some serious, serious questions. It is true that the Bema Seat is Greek for the Judgment Seat of Christ or the Judgment Seat. However, when Paul said Bema Seat, he knew exactly what it was. He knew it was the Judgment Seat. In this particular case, he was talking about judgment seat of Christ and what it involved, the seriousness of it. Anyhow, let's take a look at what Paul said about this judgment that will affect the body of Christ in 2 Timothy 4.1. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing. Remember what this appearing was? This is the day of Christ, the rapture, at his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Second Timothy four eight, 
Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. So we see the phrase, that day, the day of Christ, the day, the rapture, the gathering, at his appearing, again, a reference to the day of gathering, the rapture, the day of Christ. Same phrase we saw back in Second Thessalonians 2, but the person that wrote the letter, the counterfeiter, had used the phrase incorrectly. In Acts 17.31, because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men in that he hath raised him from the dead. 2 Corinthians 5. Yeah, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Now, pay very close attention to the following verse. Paul tells us three very important things. He's going to tell us when we're going to be judged, who the judge is, and how we're going to be judged. Three very important things to understand. This is the meat of this study in Romans 2.16. In the day, there's that phrase again, when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. So according to Romans 2.16, we know the when we'll be judged. Paul says in the day, the day of Christ. We went over that. We know who will be judged. Who's going to judge us? Paul tells us it's by our Lord Jesus Christ. And thirdly, we know the how we'll be judged. Paul says according to my gospel. Paul reveals exactly what we'll be judged on what we won't be judged on and the outcome of this judgment for each and every one of us and thankfully Paul doesn't just tell us that there's a future judgment and leave us hanging fortunately Paul tells us what we need to do now to ensure that each of us can have a favorable outcome on the other side of this time of judgment he tells us what we have to do now to prepare for the day 1 Corinthians 3, 6, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his labor. 1 Corinthians 3, 9, for we are laborers together with God, Ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 3.12 Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest for the day. There's that phrase again. The day, our gathering, the day of Christ, the rapture, the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Now, before we move on, let me share with you what we won't be judged on first, okay? Let's cover that. Now, I've written this in the comment section several times, but for me it's exactly uh, it, it's exactly what explains who we are in Christ Jesus 
it, it explains what our Lord Jesus Christ did for us on the cross. So I'm going to go ahead and use it here in this study. Now, imagine yourself going back 2,000 years, seeing Jesus Christ on the cross, and he says, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? What exactly did Jesus mean by that? Well, we know Jesus was quoting King David. And also notice Jesus says, My God, my God. He says it twice. He's speaking to the Father and the Holy Spirit. Jesus was completely taking on God's wrath and judgment at that very moment in time. Jesus says, I thirst. That's the same thing the rich man said in hell. If you remember the, the, the parable. Whose wrath and judgment was Jesus taking on at that very moment? It was our wrath, our judgment, our torment and suffering in hell. He took the wrath and judgment that we were supposed to have and took it upon himself paying in full all of our future torture in hell. Jesus experienced our payment for sin. He paid for it in full on our behalf and rose from the grave back to life in full righteousness. Now for us, the saints, there is no future wrath and judgment and torture and suffering. It's been dealt with 2,000 years ago. It's not our worthiness that allows us to escape God's wrath and judgment, tribulation. It's Jesus' worthiness, his faithfulness to keep us. It's his righteousness that will allow us to escape at the rapture. So it's clear that our sins have been paid for in full. Our sins will not be an issue at the judgment seat of Christ. So that raises a question, does it not? If our sins are not an issue at the judgment seat of Christ, then how can we lose rewards? Paul says we're going to be judged on good and bad, right? What exactly is it that causes this great loss at our time of judgment before Christ Jesus? It's this loss that we need to be concerned about. That's the pressing issue at hand that can be changed while we still have time. Now recall the verse, Romans 2.16, In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. The day, our gathering, we're judged by Jesus Christ according to Paul's gospel. If we're going to be judged by our Lord Jesus Christ according to Paul's gospel, I think it's important that we better know exactly this gospel that Paul's talking about, right? Paul tells us clearly in Ephesians 3, 2, If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you word. The dispensation of the grace of God. That sounds very different than the gospel of the kingdom, does it not? Colossians 1, 25, 26, Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you. Paul was made a minister according to the dispensation of the grace of God, which was given to Paul for us to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery, which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now, but now, is made manifest to his saints. This but now is a representation of Paul. It wasn't revealed before Paul. When Paul came along and had his uh, meeting with Jesus on the road to Damascus, that is the but now. It all started at that point. It was made manifest to Paul. This dispensation of God that was given to him for us to fulfill the word of God. It was manifested to Paul and then manifested to his saints. In Romans 16, 25, Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel. This is Paul's gospel. Not Peter's gospel, not the 11 apostles gospel, 
wasn't Jesus's gospel that he preached on the earth this wasn't James's gospel it wasn't John's gospel now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel Paul's gospel in the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation a revelation is something new that is revealed that was never known before it was revealed to Paul according to the revelation of the mystery again was never known before Paul which was kept secret since the world began first Corinthians 2 verse 7 but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery even the hidden wisdom it, who was it hidden from it was hidden from the sons of men it was hidden from the entire world everybody from the beginning to and up to Paul it was hidden from them it was revealed to Paul alone then to us even the hidden wisdom which God ordained when when did God ordain this mystery and this hidden wisdom before the world unto our glory before the world which none of the princes of this world knew for had they known it they would not have crucified the Lord of glory Ephesians 3 5 which in other ages was not made known this gospel this revelation to Paul this mystery our gospel of grace which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed the but now now revealed unto his holy apostles and the prophets by the Spirit Galatians 1 verse 11 but I certify you brethren that the gospel Paul's gospel which was preached of me is not after man For I neither received it of man. Paul never learned it from Peter or the other ones. How did he get it? Neither was I taught it, okay, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. Paul received the gospel of the grace of God directly from our Lord Jesus Christ which was never made known before Paul Paul told us where his gospel came from and now in the following he's gonna tell us what we need to do with that gospel and by what means our knowledge will be tested at the judgment seat of Christ first Corinthians 3 verse 10 according to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder see Paul is the wise master builder here I have laid the foundation Paul laid that foundation and another buildeth thereon but let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid which is Jesus Christ now if any man build upon this foundation Paul's foundation gold silver precious stones wood hay stubble every man's work shall be made manifest for the day the day that that's the rapture the gathering the, the day of Christ shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire the day will be revealed by fire the day of Christ and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is so revealed by fire what is this fire who is this fire well let's look at some scripture Hebrews 12 29 for our God is a consuming fire Acts 7 30 and when 40 years were expired there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai an angel of the Lord in a flame of fire in a bush Deuteronomy 424 for the Lord thy God is a consuming fire even a jealous God so we're learning about building on the right foundation how that Paul is as the wise master builder who laid the foundation for us to build upon and Paul says we need to be very cautious how we build upon his foundation first we have the foundation which is Jesus Christ then Paul places his first level on that foundation which is the gospel of the grace of God 
He's the master builder. As the wise master builder. The mystery revealed a significant difference between the body of Christ and the kingdom saints. Notice the gospel of Peter and the eleven. Their kingdom gospel is a different foundation. Peter's gospel and Paul's gospel are both laid on the foundation of Jesus Christ. Yes, that is true. However, the way Peter starts to build on that foundation is different than how Paul was told to build his. Kingdom versus grace, the prophetic program versus the mystery program. Two different buildings. Now recall in our study on Galatians, in Galatians 1.6, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. You see, Paul says, which is not another, because both gospels were on the same foundation of Jesus Christ, but they were two different gospels built on that same foundation. We know from our study on Galatians that one gospel revolved around the Mosaic law or the kingdom program and the other gospel was Paul's gospel of the mystery revealed, the gospel of the grace of God. Two gospels built on the same foundation but each being very distinct in nature for two different groups of people. Paul continues on in verse 8, but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you let him be accursed they both have the same foundation but they're two very different structures does everyone see that there's Peter and Paul the book of Galatians is Paul's letter of warning that they were building on the they were building the wrong way the wrong foundation they were starting off incorrectly they were trying to build faith plus law the the body of Christ in, in Galatia was being uh, pressured into following the kingdom program the mosaic law program and it was messing them up because now they were told to build differently you see Peter's building is for the nation of Israel. Paul's building is for the body of Christ. And the judgment seat of Christ will be based upon first the foundation of Jesus Christ, then off of the building of the gospel revealed to Paul. Why is this significant? It's very significant because if you're not rightly dividing scripture, if you're building off of Peter's kingdom gospel, if you're not applying 2 Timothy 2.15, which the majority of Christendom is not doing right, then think about what's going to happen to them at the judgment seat of Christ when they're judged based on the gospel revealed to Paul. They're all going to suffer loss. They're building with the wrong materials. They're using wood, hay, and stubble. Now recall from earlier the phrase, our inheritance, versus the phrase, the reward of our inheritance. Let's discuss our inheritance first. Our inheritance for the body of Christ is the heavenly domain. We inherit heaven. It comes with the gift of salvation. Everybody gets the inheritance. Now, the reward of the inheritance is all the specifics within our inheritance. First, we're going to look at our inheritance in Ephesians 1, 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated <clears throat> according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ 
in whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed. Ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Now, let's get familiar with the other phrase, the reward of the inheritance. In Colossians 3, verse 23, And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that the knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons. Now, the easiest way to explain the reward of the inheritance would be, for example, the government of heaven, okay, involves many different levels and organizations, different positions within the government of heaven. There are seats, powers, thrones, principalities, mights, and every name that is named. These are positions or offices in which the angels in heaven and humans on earth function as rulers right we have a government here on earth there's a government in heaven there's a government in heaven just like we have around the world today colossians 1 16 for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers all things were created by him and for him Ephesians 1.19, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Now here's, these, here's this government. Here's the different positions coming up. Verse 21, Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and hath put all things under his feet, and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Ephesians 3 8 unto me, who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ. Ephesians 3.10 To the intent that now unto here's the, here's the government the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him now breaking it down in simpler terms the inheritance is the free gift of salvation everyone who gets saved will receive the inheritance it's a gift however the reward of the inheritance is based on what we do as individuals as members of the body of Christ while we're alive on earth in the here and now everything you do now will determine what reward you will receive within the inheritance what role you will play what position you will be given in that government what responsibility you will have and so on the day of Christ or the day our day before the judgment seat of Christ will be a review of our service within the body of Christ while we're here on earth. Everything we do, good or bad, will be taken into consideration to determine our reward of the inheritance. Did you listen to Paul when he said, take heed how you build? Did you build on the right foundation? How do we build precious stones and, and avoid building wood, hay, and stubble? We're going to be judged by the word of God in light of the revelation of the mystery given only to Paul. Can you see why 
Paul's gospel is so important to understand? Why right division is so important to understand? Look at Romans 11, 13. For I speak to you Gentiles, this is Paul, I speak to you Gentiles inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles. Wow. Paul is the apostle of the Gentiles. Not Peter, not James, not John. Paul. And he goes on and says, I magnify mine office. I am the head man. I am the CEO of the body of Christ. That's what Paul's saying. His gospel. And the only way you're going to be able to figure this out is if you understand right division. That's why right division is so important. Romans 2.16 In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. My gospel, Paul says, and he's the apostle of the Gentiles and he magnifies his office. We're going to be judged by the gospel given to Paul. Remember this, as believers, our works will be brought under the scrutiny of God's word. And there's going to be two searching questions on that day. First, did we acknowledge Paul's apostleship and message to the Gentiles, his gospel? Second, were we obedient to the commands of Christ taught in Paul's gospel? The Lord will judge all members of his body on the basis of their faithfulness according to their ability to understand Paul's gospel, the mystery given to Paul. Do some reading of Ephesians 3, verse 1 to 21. You'll get a better understanding of this. Now moving on, gold and silver and precious stones represent our good works and faithful service that ultimately leads to spiritual results, salvation being the most important, of course. On the other hand, the wood, hay, and stubble represent those things that are done in the flesh, which are temporary in nature. They have no significance to salvation or spiritual growth, and they're going to be burned up. There won't be any reward for our good works done to impress other people. Only our good works done for and to the glory of God, those will bring rewards. Every man's work shall be made manifest. God is going to bring forth every man's work for a complete and thorough review. Paul is talking about the body of our work, okay? That we produced over the course of our time in the body of Christ on earth before the rapture. The Jesuit seat of Christ is a dispensational phrase solely found in Paul's writings. Also, the Jesuit seat of Christ was a mystery within the mystery of the dispensation of the grace of God revealed again to Paul. Only Paul. It's referred to in his revelation as the day that day and the day of Christ. This particular judgment is going to take place at, again, the Harpazzo, our gathering. According to 1 Thessalonians, this is a planned meeting that was kept secret since the world began. You can read about it in, in Romans 16 and 1 Thessalonians 4. Dear saints, we, we won't be condemned, but our actions and deeds just prior to our death or the rapture will determine what rewards we'll gain or lose at the judgment. And when I say rewards, I'm talking about positions in heaven. There are seats and powers and, and authorities and, and all these things that are going to be given to people according to their spiritual growth, their spiritual maturity, what they can handle. What you do now is definitely going to determine what you will be doing in heaven. Some are going to receive more honor and rewards and blessings and others are going to they're going to be disappointed when they have certain rewards and abilities and authorities withheld from them because they're just not spiritually mature enough to handle those responsibilities. Remember 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 10 for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. 
Finally, and fortunately, we still have time to influence what happens to us at the judgment seat of Christ and what role we're going to play in the heavenly government. Have you ever heard the saying, be careful what you wish for? We all wish for the rapture. We all want the rapture to happen today. But if it did happen today, or if it did happen on September 23rd, many of the saints would look back and wish they'd had more time to work out their salvation to prepare for the judgment seat of Christ. Do an honest survey of your life in Christ Jesus and ask yourselves those hard qu the hard questions. Prepare yourselves for what's coming very soon. If you want to be safe and you want to be sure that you, that you know you're building precious stones that are going to survive the fire of testing by Jesus Christ, planting seeds, the gospel, planting them among the lost is one of the methods to gain those precious stones. Acting religious, trying to be good, going to church, performing spiritual busy work, arguing with other saints, trying to prove yourself right all the time, preaching and practicing Peter's kingdom gospel will not help you at the judgment seat of Christ. Those things will be burned when tested by the fire of righteousness according to Paul's gospel. And those of you who are in Christ Jesus in his body have already received the inheritance. But not all of us will receive the same type of the rewards of the inheritance. But we still have time to work that out. Amen? Thanks for studying with me. In Christ Jesus, I love you all. Peace, grace, and love. I'll see you on the next video.